Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome to another Speedcast interview session. I am your host, Julio, also known as ZoomCW. Today, we have a very special guest. Uh, you guys recently saw him in The Liberator on Netflix. He is a very talented actor from Costa Rica. He is none other than Jose Palma, who um, plays Private Cruz in The Liberator. So let's go ahead and get him on the live. Hey, Jose, how are you, man? So far, so good. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, thanks, man. Just hanging in there, man. Looks how you? Good, how, man. Oh, you too, man. Thank, thank you so much for joining my Speedcast um, interview session today, man. I truly appreciate it. Thank you. I mean, thank you for making the time. And you know what? Congratulations. Thank you. On, on the Liberator. <laughs> A amazing work, man. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. Thank you very much for having me, by the way. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here, and thank you very much. Yeah, Liberator was, was a very good show. I'm very proud of it, man. You know, um, it's it's just so well done, man. And, and you know, it's just – it's it's been one of my favorites. I mean, I've been watching it on repeat over and over and over. <laughs> um, and, and it's so good. It's so addicting, man. Um before we get into the Liberator, though, I got to ask yeah. you, how are you doing? Uh, you're out there in the UK right now, correct? I am. I'm freezing my buttocks off, uh, Julio. It is very cold over here, man, but uh, and very windy. So I'm right now living in an area that is right next to the Thames. So it's, it's a little bit windy because of, of, you know, the water aspect of it. And uh, in Costa Rica, we don't have this type of cold, man. We like the sun. We like La Playita. You know, nice and relaxed. <laughs> we're not all about, you know, this cold, but we're, we have to survive, what do you? Um, definitely an adjustment, right? I mean, you know, Costa Rica, you know, Los Angeles, Mexico, like this Central America, we're, you know, we're used to that normal, you know, um, hot um, humidity sometimes. Well, in LA, it's more of a dry heat, but man, yeah. the UK, that's, that's got to be a, 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 a big change for you. But you've, you've obviously adapted, correct? Yeah, I mean, I've been here for now five years. And you said something very specific. You said that perfect weather. And indeed, it's the, the perfect weather where, where we're from. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I've been here in the UK for five years. I love it. Absolutely. Love it. I mean, the weather is, is nor here nor there anymore. But it, it still feels very cold, man. It feels. But we're surviving, brother. We're surviving. We're survivors, you and I. Nice. Awesome, man. Um, um, fam family's healthy. Everything's safe. I mean, this pandemic is, you know, getting crazy again. Yeah, thank you very much for asking, man. Um, to be quite honest with you, Costa Rica handled the pandemic a very, very nice uh, way. I mean, in, in terms of, you know, comparison to, to other countries. Uh, so I'm very blessed to, to say that my family's all good, that they're all chilling. They, they stayed at home when they had to, um, and they switched to barbecues from the beach to the backyard and to stay safe, uh, you know, so it's good news all across the board in the family. That's great, man. That's great. How about you, man? Uh, Everybody safe? Everyone's safe. Thank God. You know, thank you for asking. Uh, it's just been crazy, you know, where I work at, you know, um, the, the hospital has just been insane, man. So it's been long hours. It's just been crazy for everyone. Um, and I, I just want to give a, a huge shout out to all the, all the workers, the uh, medical workers, the nurses, the doctors, everyone that's out there, um, you know, putting their lives at risk to, you know, to help all these folks that are that are going through a tough time with uh, with the virus. So uh, kudos to all of them. Um, man, the liberator, dude. How has the reaction been so far, man? What, what, what's going on? How, how, many, how many folks are calling you and texting you and, and just wanting to, you know, to talk about the liberator? Well, um, you know, it's been an absolute, uh, you know, ride in, and in a very good way. Uh, of course, everybody that knows me sort of texting me. They're like, oh, wow, you're, you're so sneaky, man. And, uh, you know, obviously, Jose Cruz, I mean, for those who haven't seen him, we're not going to spoil too much. Um, so you guys can go watch it. But it was a really good response all across the board. I think the one that touched my heart the most were people that serve in the military, that they got in contact with us and, and they – 
sort of, you know, spoke their mind and how much they loved it and how much it means. So we're bringing, uh, you know, the Thunderbirds um, to the screen and all thanks to Alex Kershaw and, you know, Jeff Stewart and, and Greg Junkaitis, who, who there, there you go, definitely applauding to these guys that, uh, these geniuses that brought this story to the screen and, and brought us on board to, to tell this great story. So in terms of how people reacted, you know, I, I've only heard uh, good stuff, thank, thankfully. Um, and, um, and yeah, I'm really happy with the response, man. Think things are looking great. It's, it's weird to see my face in the television, you know? Always has been. <laughs> you did great, man. I mean. Thank you. You know, it, it's so good to see a story about, and, and I mentioned this to your, you know, your co-stars as well. It's yeah. so great to see a story about Mexican Americans yeah. and you know Native Americans and you know the Oklahoma Cowboys c coming together to fight as one unit, you know, in the Thunderbirds and mm -hmm. and to you know fight World, World War Two and be, putting all their differences aside that. You know that, in my eyes, is pretty stupid to begin with, right? Yeah. But all those, all those differences, and just going in and 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 becoming that one unit and becoming brothers. But I mean, you guys, outside of that, you know, the the movie realm or the, the series realm, you guys did become brothers in real life, correct? I mean, I, I see all the all the Instagram posts, and and you guys look like you had lots of genuine fun with each other. We did, man. From the moment that we arrived, and and I think. Uh, you know, Pedro and Jose that you spoke to before, I'm pretty sure they touched on it as well. You know, from the moment we arrived, we just clicked. Um, and I mean, that's a testament not only to Nancy Bishop, who did the casting and, and everyone else involved, but everyone just came on set and just clicked and we understood what we we're there for. Um, and, you know, okay, well, like, I'll give you an example. So when I first arrived to, we, we shot this in Luch, Poland. And we, when I arrived to the hotel, it was about, I don't know, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., somewhere on, along those lines. And uh, I decided to go upstairs to the gym, you know, to pretend that, um, you know, I am in shape, which I'm not. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to pretend in my mind to do a little bit of cardio and then I'm good for the day. And I went up and then I see this huge dude, you know, muscleless, you know, dude just in the front, you know, just running. And uh, the first instance that came to me, that's Hallowell. I, he looks like a Hallowell. And uh, we, we, you know, we said hello. And from that instance, we, we just like, hey, we're going to go eat. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. And it, it was just so um, easy to connect with these guys. Um, you know, they're all, you know, bless their hearts. They're all amazing people. So we were able to sort of come in and, you know, once we're on set to, to continue. But yeah, uh, lucky for them. Everyone is a friend of mine nowadays, Julio. So, <laughs> so now uh, we, we hang out quite a lot. I mean, obviously, I live in London, so we hang around with, you know, with Bradley and Pedro and Felipe, you know, all these, you know, Luca, um, great actors that live here in the uh, in the UK, and the rest wishes to hang out with us, Julio. That's that's what. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> you mentioned Hollowell. Yes. You know, your chemistry with him was perfect. Oh, thank you. I'm. Um, I mean. It looked like you guys must have, you know, because of the chemistry, the chemistry on the screen. It looked. I'm thinking to myself, they must have had a chemistry read, but you guys, did, you guys did not have a chemistry, right? No, that instance that I told you in the gym, that was a. Wow, that that is awesome. Did we lose sound? Are we? Oh, are we having sound issues? Can you guys still hear me? If you guys can still hear me, put it in the chat. Are we having? Can you guys still hear me? If you guys can hear me, uh, make sure you put it in the chat so I, I know whether it's from my side or Jose's side. You guys can hear me? Okay. Oh. You guys can hear me? Okay. Um, Jose, I don't know. If, maybe do you want to? Uh, if you want to leave the live and then join again, let's try that. Okay, guys. So while we wait, um, just want to, you know, I just want to thank all you guys. Okay, give me one second here. We're going to try. Thank you all you guys for joining. I truly appreciate it. There we go.
There you go. We're back. Can there you hear me? Go. We're back. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Sorry about that. Somebody called no me. Worries. So rude of them. We, we are live. This is live. So, hey, so, so everyone that's doubting if this is live or not, there you go. That was, that was the proof, <laughs> Leo. We proved them wrong. Hey, manure happens sometime, you guys. Exactly. Exactly. But continue, brother. You, you're saying some awfully nice stuff. Oh, um, so, you know, uh, it, it looked like you guys, you know, must have had a chemistry read, you and Hollowell, because, you know, your scenes were just so on point. You know, I, I don't want to give too much away, but there's yeah. there's the, the playing card scene, um, yeah. <laughs> which I thought was pretty. That was a, that, that looked like you guys had lots of fun. Um, and of course, there was uh, the bunker scenes. There was um, you. I don't want to give too much away, but you had a a couple of close calls there and you know the the way that he you know his response was just pretty you know pretty amazing how was it filming those those particular scenes well yeah i mean uh, first of all you know with brian um he's one of those dudes i, I love him a bit he's become a brother since then um and from the beginning we we just clicked and, and like i told you that you know chemistry reading was pretty much a story of us uh, going to the gym together and me pretending like I work out. Uh, but once we got on set, we, we understood part of the part of the story where, where Jeb was brilliant about bringing Brian um, and myself, you know, we had the responsibility of bringing these two characters very different from each other. Um, and even though we didn't see eye to eye at the beginning, it was, it was through, through Jeb's writing that we kind of saw that bond, you know, which is, you know, well, when it comes to these circumstances that they were in, which is war, they found themselves and they found this brotherhood through these, you know, terrible circumstances. And I think those two characters, that's what they, you know, they, they brought to the screen is no matter how you look like, what worlds you come from, why, you know, if you think differently, you know, you become brothers if, if you, you know, you know, set your mind to it. So I think it was, it was a very awesome story, and I'm very privileged to to talk about that. And, and you know, Brian was absolutely brilliant in terms of filming it. You know, uh, it it was it was a very challenging thing because I'm sure you know with, with Pedro and, and Mike Tocayo, uh, you guys already know that this whole thing was shot in blue screen. It was, you know, the only real thing was us. You know, if we if they told us, hey, you have to imagine this, I don't know, plane going up. It was a tennis ball. We had to pretend, you know, use your imagination 200%. Um, and it was brilliant. You know, the, the one thing, there was, there was a scene where I'm in, in the, uh, you know, one of the foxholes. And it was amazing because how to kind of create an image of how we shot this and how we needed to, to do this. We were in this sort of blue box, you know. So the walls were, you know, just blue walls and we we're just sitting there. And there was a scene where bombs are going off. And obviously there is no real explosions on set because we're inside a building. I remember we were sitting there and our director, Greg, um, to kind of give us an idea, he's like, all right, so here's an explosion. So I'm gonna say, boom, so you can react to an explosion. And then it was just Greg sort of saying, boom, boom, and you have to just sort of like react to it. And it was the most fun because you, you feel like, you know, you feel alive, like, you know, this is the reason why you got into acting. So use your imagination, bring a story to life, right? Uh, but it was just so fun to, to just be there in that, you know, environment. And me and Brian were just, you know, reacting to, to Greg's voice. It was phenomenal, Julio. I will do that again in a million, you know, a million times to come. It was, it was great. That's awesome. And, you know, it, it, it looked like you guys had so much fun. And, yeah. you know, you, you, you talk about, you know, the whole pretending, right? Yeah. Um, that's when I know you guys are all amazing actors because that's that's hard to do, man. That is very hard to do. We've heard the stories from other actors, you know, working on Jurassic Park, pretending that there's a T-Rex chasing them. Um, that takes a lot of work, man. And, I mean, it does take you back to being a kid, right? When you're pretending that a, a T-Rex is chasing you, or in your case, bombs or, you know, shells of bombs are coming your way. But yeah. man, the way you guys portrayed it was just perfect. Uh, when it when it came on my feed on Netflix, I didn't know that it was like Sin City. I didn't know that you know it, it reminded me of the Aha video of Take on Me. I had no idea it was like animation, which was integrated into live action. But yeah. it grabbed me right away. And on that note, congratulations to the Liberator, to everyone 
because you guys just won a Brando Award um, because of of the presentation of the, I believe it's for innovation, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, just amazing. When you saw the final product, Jose, what was your reaction? I cried. I cried a little bit. You know, it was, you know, it was, uh, <laughs> I'm not ashamed to say it. I cried a little bit, definitely. I, I saw the trailer and of course, we, we had a, a vague idea of what it might look like whilst we were on set. You know, Greg was showing us sort of, you know, small little videos of, of what we're going to be expecting. Uh, but it was until we saw the final product and, and we, the, the boys um, had a call right before the trailer dropped. And we got to see the trailer before, you know, everyone else. And the feeling that we all got, it was, it was such a beautiful moment for all of us to sit down and be together and see the, the final product before everyone else, because we, you know, we have so many great stories of, of us working together. Um, and I cried a little bit because I, it was, it was incredible what they actually did. You know, the, the people in Triscope were just geniuses, how they were able to bring this world and create everything around us in, in such a way that, you know, it just, like you said, it grabbed your attention. And it definitely grabbed mine. Um, and that takes, you know, that takes skill, brains, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it was a sense of, of, of accomplishment. You know, once we saw it, we're like, this is a story I'm proud to tell. Um, and I think we all felt that way, even from when we got the script. Um, I know when I first got the script, even before I even got casted, I read the script and I said, you know what? I, you know, it, whether I get it or not, I'm glad that this story is going out. I'm glad that people are going to see the story, whether I get the part or not. Um, and, you know, thank God that, you know, I was able to be part of it. But once we saw it, we we're like, yes, that's, yes, I love that. I, I, I'm so proud of it. Whatever happens, whatever the reception is, doesn't matter. You know, you're happy. You're proud of what you see and, and, and you will live by that. And, and, you know, we were all, you know, extremely, extremely happy. Um, and we're already laughing of each scene going like, you know, hi, you remember that day? Yeah, that was an interesting day, but it looked great now, you know, stuff like that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, when m me and my sons and my wife finished watching it, we got emotional. Um, as a matter of fact, we were emotional throughout because the story of Mexican Americans, you know, I grew up here in LA as a Mexican American, you know, we don't get represented in a positive light very often. And I'm gonna say it like it is. I know there's gonna be people that are gonna, that are gonna argue with me about it, I'll, you know, my followers, but unfortunately there isn't too many positive stories out there. And this is one of those stories. Yeah. Um, and anytime you see that, it just, it just brings a tear to your eye and makes you emotional. And all of us here got emotional because we were being represented. How does that feel, Jose, to to represent a community, you know, in the Latino community? Um, how, how, did you think that was a heavy burden or do you think, no, I'm going to do this justice? You know, well, you know, thank you very much for putting me in, in, that, in that realm. Um, it, it is, I, I'm not scared of it. I feel more of it as, as a privilege, Julio, because like, like, you, like you said, you know, when we were growing up, the uh, role models, I guess, in films or, or television of individuals who look like us, you know, they're Latino, uh, were very scarce. We were not able to sort of see that much representation, um, to see somebody, whether it's going to be a superhero, whatever the case may be, that looked like us, that, that we can sort of connect to, right? Um, and all these, now that the film industry is changing and is more, a lot more inclusive than it was before, um, you kind of step into the stage and you say, okay, well, this is the moment. This is the moment that we're going to grab and we're not going to let go to make sure that everybody is represented. In, in this case, the Latino community, uh, when we get sort of, you know, this, this type of, you know, roles, we, we understand that people are going to look at those and, and see the role models that perhaps you and I didn't have when we were growing up. And that's what we have to make the best of it. And once we're on set, you know, we bring our A game because of it, because we understand that people are going to be looking at that um, in the way that we wish we would have had that opportunity. You know what I mean? Um, so it's, it's more of a, a privilege to, to be in that seat and you take it and, and there, there's nothing scary about that because, you know, first of all, I love this job, you know, everything about it. Um, and that's part of the responsibility, I guess, is to, 
you know, to showcase, uh, in this case, the war and how Latinos played a huge part in World War II. Um, and not only is that historical accurate, but also it brings joy to, to Latinos across the, the world to see representation on films, you know, that Netflix has taken a chance on everybody across the board and telling the real stories per se. Very well said, my friend, very well said. There are some more, you know, let's talk a little bit about diversity in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there, there have been some breakout, you know, roles recently um, with you know, Pedro Pascal in The Mandalorian. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that's a big, big one. And, and, I'm, and I'm so happy for his success. Um, you know, it, it is, like you mentioned, it is getting a little better in Hollywood. Um, hopefully there, there is a little, you know, more opportunity overall, you know, in diversity. Uh, yeah. I love when I see film or, or TV or, or streaming when, you know, there is re representation of, of every single, um, you know, um, culture out there because sometimes, you know, and I've mentioned this before, you'll see a scene, for example, and I'm not trying to throw any, any production under the bus. Yeah. You'll see a scene in Captain Marvel. And I've mm -hmm. said this before. You know, um, supposedly, you know, the scene was a, a flashback to the 1990s downtown L.A. You're in the subway. And, yeah, uh, you know, that, yeah. You know, there, there's not a single Latino on the train. I know they filmed it. There, I know. I know they filmed it out in Australia. I get it in Melbourne. I get it. But yeah. you could have found some folks out there, man. <laughs> but you know, you you gotta you gotta represent Hollywood. So how how do you feel about that? Well, listen, you know, not only that, I remember growing up, um, you know, watching movies in space, even that, that's that's one of the things that I remember kind of just going, you know, at the beginnings of Star Wars, you know, Star Trek and, and kind of not seeing any Latinos. I'm like, oh, that's a little bit scary. How come there's no Latinos in space? Like that's I, I don't know if they're telling us something, but, you know, we need to see some Latinos in space. Um, so remember, uh, you know, watching all these shows and, and the lack of sort of Latinos at the time that that was very you know, worse. I mean, and, you know, like the example that you mentioned, Pedro. Uh, Pedro's a, such an, an amazing example. He's, he's such an amazing dude. Um, and his success is, is sort of part of that world finally opening up to to the change where the world sort of realized, all right, we're no longer having the same type of stories that we did before, or we're no longer having a production where um, it is a very particular, you know, cast or look, you know, it's now all inclusive. I, I got a chance to meet a, an executive, um, you know, a long time ago, um, I, for, I think it was, it was ABC, if I'm not mistaken. And he told me that his job was to look at productions and make sure that there was all types of inclusive, uh, you know, everyone being inclusive um, in that storyline. So if you presented a script and then you presented a cast, you go, well, is this cast diverse enough? No, go back to the drawing board, buddy. We're not going to, uh, you know, say yes to, to this um, until that that sort of, you know, is a screen lit and has a proper sort of, you know, diverse cast that it needs to have, especially because they're representative of the real world, right? The real world is now all mixed and there's all types of people, no matter where you go. So it needs to be real. Um, so I think that, um, you know, before it, it was, it was very, it, it was, it's very tough. And I can only imagine, you know, Latino actors, you know, in those sort of types of moments kind of just not being able to get that push or, you know, the type of roles that, you know, you see a Latino, like, you know, sometimes they're filming in LA, uh, you know, you see the, you know, the Cholos or something like that. You kind of go, well, the Latinos are more than, than just that, you know, why, why not have Latinos somewhere else? You know, we're not just have it everywhere, how it is in the real world. Right. Um, so for me at the beginning, that's one of the things that I sort of took upon myself to work hard for was I need to work twice as hard, uh, unfortunately, to make sure that I get in productions, um, you know, they're wide enough for the public to show the reality of, of you know, inclusive cast, right? Uh, so um, I, I knew that from the beginning, I had to fight against that. Um, thankfully, as years go by, um, I've been seeing sort of the, the, the film industry kind of just saying, all right, hold, hold wait a second, you know, this, this role, this cop role, you know, why do we have this image of a specific type of cop? You know, no, no, let's, let's open it up for everyone, right? Um, you know, same thing for, for gender, you know, it's like, why, why, is, why is this character has to be, you know, male? No, no, let's open it up for any type of gender, right? 
Um, so it is, it is slowly but surely changing. Um, and that makes me sort of very happy. We still have a long way to go, right? A long way to go for everybody to sort of, you know, show that reality of, you know, going back to the example, if we're going to make a, you know, a TV show in space, let's have everybody, right? Let's have all types of, of races and, and genders and, and all that good stuff, because that's, that's what we connect to, right? Stories are supposed to bring the reality and bring connection um, for people to sort of disconnect for an hour and a half or however many, you know, episodes you're watching and to really feel connected to something. How can we feel connected to something if we don't, you know, see ourselves in, in you know, some sort of way, shape or form, right? Um, so I, th I think, you know, to, to sum everything up, I, I think that we're, we're, we're getting there um, slowly but surely, but I'm very happy that at least, you know, like examples like Pedro, um, that, you know, finally the Latinos are, are breaking out of the specific type of roles and, and just are out there and they're making a you know, Michael Peña. He's this dude. I love Michael Peña, you know, it's a bitch. And, and, you know, he's one of the pioneers of the Latino, you know, he started as a troll like, Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? And now he's just making all types of movies, you know? And, uh, that was one of the guys that, that I looked up to when, when he uh, did Fury. I remember when I saw Fury and I saw, I saw his character in Fury, I'm like, I'm so glad that, you know, there was, a, uh, you know, a Latino in that sort of group because that was, that was the war. Where, you know, all types of people, you know, fought in the war. And I didn't see that before. And this is why I was so happy that the Liberator got, you know, coming around to the Liberator. When I saw the script and I saw Indian Americans, Mexican Americans, and, you know, cowboys and, and everybody fighting together, I'm like, yes, that's reality. That's historically, you know, accurate. And that's what I want to see. Very well said, my friend. Very well said. Thank you. Um, you're, you're too kind, Julio. Be before we get to the next question, uh, I just want to remind our, our viewers, uh, if you have a question uh, for Jose, there's a little question mark icon down below. Uh, make sure you click on that and submit your question. Um, you can also put it down on the chat, and we'll get to, we'll get to them. But um, uh, I need to get to my next um, question. Besides the Liberator, man, I got to yeah. congratulate you on some other projects. You recently did Crawl, uh, yeah. which came out last year. Um, you have you've did uh, Absentia, um, yeah. and, and you did a couple of video games, uh, uh, which was The Division 2, and then you also did, um, I believe it was Hitman, right? Um, and congratulations on all those projects. And you're also working uh, on a little project. I'm going to call it little. Right. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to call it little. For... <laughs> Go ahead. I, I don't know. You know, little is a description. You know, uh, there is many descriptions to describe this project. I'm very, very happy to be part of. But yeah, continue. Continue. Uh, I'm going to be sarcastic and I'm going to call it little for now. <laughs> um, it's a Marvel film yeah. um, um, and I'm not going to say any, any any more about it. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to you. All right. Hold on. I, before we get talking, I need to stretch and make sure I get my head right, Julio, because <laughs> there uh, is and, and NDAs, right? NDAs. NDAs, um, you know, are really, you know, already clicking already. So, okay. Now that we're in a mindset, I cannot, I cannot share, um, too much, uh, but the little film that, you, that you're speaking of is uh, Venom 2, um, which will be coming out next summer. Um, and all I can say, Julio, is that I had a blast, uh, you know, filming this. I, I, was, I was on set uh, on my birthday, and I think that's one of the, the, the most amazing things to be on set. And, you know, the, the cast and crew were so, so, you know, arms wide and open, you know, they were so happy that everyone was there. And, and, uh, you know, even though my, my part is, you know, relatively small, it, it was, it was so nice to see everyone sort of, you know, so happy and singing happy birthday and, and meeting Andy Circus, Tom, you know, it was, you know, they're, they're just, you know, amazing people. They're A-listers, masters in their craft. Um, and I'm very blessed to, to be, you know, part of, of something, you know, this big. And I'm sure that a lot of people are really excited to see what uh, the director and everyone else cast and crew has to, to show you guys. 
I'm so happy for you, man, for booking that role and um, you know being part of the the MCU or you know I, I don't I, I don't know if it's technically part of the MCU, but it's still a Marvel uh, produced film. Um, yeah. You got big, big, big names. Andy Serkis being one of them, um, and of course you have Woody Harrelson. Um, you know that that's just like it, it's a dream come true. Now uh, For you me, coming into this. Yeah. Right? It's a dream come true. I mean, when you get on the set, are you fanboying? Are you geeking out when you see these guys on set? Tom Hardy and all those guys? Well, you know, okay, well, and again, the, the wording of this needs to be, you know, Ooh. perfect. But, but, uh, <laughs> so, so <laughs> once, once we're on set, you know, uh, Tom, Tom was one of the, the, the first people that I, that I, you know, saw on set and he was just, phenomenal he was you know he came in and he already knew that he wanted to work and and he's very inclusive and in what we had to do um and i love the guy he was he was absolutely amazing and Andy circus as well he's, he's a teddy bear in the circus man he's he's so nice he you know he's always attentive and, and it was just amazing to to work with a pro um and then you know you, you got actors like like you know woody for example what is in my top you know test i have a list of actors that i i i want to work with in some capacity right um and woody was was one of them um so when i got on set i i kid you not i felt like what probably girls felt like when one direction first came came out kind of thing you know just like <laughs> oh, you know just one of those like moments where you believe your eyes right that you're in, yeah. in the vicinity of this person um and this guy was just you know he was he was telling me uh, well, he's been in Costa Rica, so we, we talked about Costa Rica first of all, and I just made made me fall in love with with Woody man, and uh, you know, and then the rest will be coming, you know, to you and then this upcoming summer. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, awesome, man. I'm already feeling, you know, executives going, you know, w wait, wait, don't say much. <laughs> Uh, when I interviewed Neil Jackson, one of your you know co-stars from Absentia, he said yeah. that you could see the little red dot um, like moving around because yeah. there's a sniper from the studio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's actually someone behind me right now with a gun, and it's just <laughs> pulling me in every time I'm, I'm talking about this project. <laughs> no, it's, well, you know, I, I think it's because the, the films are so big in, in our lives now, right? That to protect that story. So it has that sort of effect that we all l fell in love with, with Mar you know, Marvel and, and DC and all these great superhero uh, genres. And, and I think it's, that's why it's very important that, that they're doing that. You know, and Neil was, was right. You kind of feel that, that, but it's because you also feel yeah. the responsibility that, you know, there's fans that are just waiting and they're anxious. And I'm one of them just waiting to see what, what they do next and what's coming out, what, character are they bringing what storyline are they going to do right and you just fan out and it's so important to sort of keep it quiet to to you know release the joy when it's intended in this case uh, in the summer so yeah I'm, I'm glad you know neil neil is such neil when, when i work with with neil on sim oh man listen i was he's an angel he's an absolute angel man um he was he was so nice to me i can I, I remember when i first arrived um you know we, we we had this hotel and obviously you don't get to meet everyone right away. And I remember uh, I was downstairs, I was gonna get, uh, grab something to eat. And I met uh, Kara and Neil, which, you know, part of the, of, the, of the show. And they're automatically, hey, hi, how are you? You know, Neil and then Kara, and it's like, we're about to go grab a bite, let's go, you're coming with. And they just embraced me, you know, in such a way that I, automatically I felt part of, of you know, Absentia and, and the Absentia fans have been absolutely amazing. Uh, but, but Neil taught me a lot. So we, we got to, you know, sit down a lot and, you know, he shared his wisdom, um, in a lot of areas. So I'm very thankful to, to, to say that I've, you know, spent some time with Neil and I love the man too, to bits. So shout out to Neil, man. He's such an amazing human being, man. He's, 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 I mean, when I've talked to him, you know, besides the interviews, uh, he's just great, man. He's just an, an amazing human, and and yeah. you know um, he's one of those few co-stars that's a teddy bear. He's such a a, a beautiful yeah. human being, but yeah. little do you know that he can actually kick your ass 
and big destroy time. you because he's a former boxer. Big time. Listen, this guy works out every single day. You can tell he has like that, that presence, right? And it's not until he actually talks and you realize he's an angel, then you kind of just realize, oh, wow, he's, I'm not, suddenly not threatened anymore. You know, like he's just, has that built and uh and yeah well I'm so, I'm so happy for him man because you know he's he's worked you know so many years and, and to get you know where he is now he, he definitely deserves it man i'm very happy for him so when you were when you were growing up jose were you a fan were you a comic book uh kind of guy were you um reading the comics or were you into any of uh any of the collection of of action figures or anything like that big time big time anything and everything julio um you know it was yeah, definitely. I think I think the first film that that made me fall in love with with comic books was the first adaptation of, of uh, Spider Man. That I remember when I sort of watched that. That's when I sort of said, "Oh, wait a second! I I, I need to pay attention to this. I need to start reading these comic books because they're onto something." And then um, yeah, that that was that's when it sort of like hooked me a hundred percent. You know, before that, I was exposed to comic books to certain extents, but um, never. To, to true fan that I am today, essentially. Um, and it was so that film came out that I was like, all right, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm with them for, you know, forever and ever. And then to this day, I'm a huge fan of Julio. Which is your favorite character, Julio? Oh, my God. Zoom, Zoom. He's my favorite of all time. There From you go. The Flash on CW. Um, I got to represent Zoom. But also Batman is, is, you know, when I was growing up, Batman, Spider-Man, yeah. Love Spider Man. Uh, you were lucky enough to be on a production of, you know, you were in Crawl, which yeah. was produced by Sam Raimi, who made the three Spider Man movies with Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Did you geek out when you met? Did, I mean, did, when you picked his brain? I mean, wh how, how did that go? How was that interaction? Listen, you know, it, it's, it's funny how the world sort of, you know, um, goes the 360, right? With, with when you're growing up, you know, with, you know, when we talked about Woody is because I grew up watching his movies and the fact that I got to work with him. Um, and with, with Sammy, it was one of those things that, again, his presence sort of, uh, you know who he is and, and what he's meant to you. So when you first meet him, you automatically, the first thing you geek out inside, right? You have that little high pitched scream. Um, and then right after the high pitched scream, then you go, all right, now we need to be cool. Let's act cool, Jose. You know, he's a normal human being. Let's pretend that we're cool. Hey, <laughs> how, how, how you doing? <laughs> and then automatically <laughs> is out the window, right? Um, but he was, he was super nice. I, I met him very briefly. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it was, it was super, super briefly because he wasn't, he wasn't on, on sets, um, at least the days that I was, I was uh, filming. Um, mm. but, but yeah, I mean, you geek out. Regardless, even if he's in the same country as you, you're like, oh my God, he's he's around the same borders, you know. It's amazing. That's awesome. Um, I got to talk about your, you know, your um, childhood growing up. Yeah. Uh, I believe you you grew up in Fort Myers, Florida, correct? Fort Myers, Florida, yes. So when when you're growing up out there. Um, are you thinking to yourself at any time as you're growing up, you know, all, all, when we're, when we're children, we're, you know, for example, when I'm a kid, when I was a kid, I, I said, I want to be a major league baseball player oh, or nice. I want to be in the NBA. Yeah. Did you at any time think I want to be an actor? No, no. Well, that, that's a very good question. No, Julio, because, um, you know, I guess my, when I grew up in, you know, Fort Myers, um, we lived in an area, you know, what's considered the hood right uh so you know it was it was it was a little bit rough um and so when you're growing up this sort of thoughts of being an actor I, well at least for me it didn't even cross my mind growing up in, in in the stage um funny enough the what sort of got me into acting was my mom she sort of put that seed in my head uh because i was clowning around doing impressions of of you know this character in Costa Rica called Elodia, right? So it's a comedy character. Um, and I was doing impressions of her and stuff like that. And then you know I started just clowning around, always putting up a show. And then my mom sat me down. It's like, listen, the, you can do this for a living. You know that, right? You can. Why don't Why don't you become an actor? I'm like, ah, 
I'm not going to become an actor. It doesn't pay. You know, I, I like money. You know, uh, I want to live. And, and, um, and, and it sort of left my mind for a long time. And every single year, you get this sort of like waves of, um, you know, of you wanting to, to peek at that. Or you're wondering, like, what would it be like to, to actually look at this as an option, uh, you know, acting? And I started doing research, you know, at the time I was uh, working for, for Western Union. So I was, you know, working for them, you know, in finance and, you know, my world was completely different. And, um, and then slowly but surely, once I went back to Costa Rica, when I left the States and I went back to Costa Rica, I decided to take a sort of peek at acting. And I went to uh, productions in La Huera, Costa Rica, um, where we started doing theater. And I remember my first, my first job was as a priest um, in a production. And my job was to deliver lines in Latin. That was one of my very first jobs, Julio, to deliver lines in Latin. If you ask me, Jose, do you know Latin? No, I do not know Latin, but any shape, way, you know, or form, Julio. But I said, you know, it's, it's amazing that I get to try. And it was a, a character that first, you know, once you walk into theater, he's doing a sermon, you know, and then the show kicks off. So he's the first character everyone sees. Uh, and it was very daunting, but I had so much fun. And that's when I sort of realized, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm going to give this a, a shot. Um, and little did I know that I was going to fall in love with it and do it, you know, however many years later. Uh, but was I was in Fort Myers, Florida, no, I, um, I was in JROTC, Julio. So at that time, I was thinking about the military and, uh, you know, to, to be, you know, part of any branch uh, of the military. I was trying to figure that out uh, because of my JROTC sort of uh, years in, in high school. And, and uh, that was, was in my mind. So acting wasn't truly there until I went back to Costa Rica. And that's when it sort of like this the seed, if you will, bloomed. And um, here we are now talking to you, Julio. That's such an amazing story, man. And you know, you you're such an inspiration to to the Latino community, man. Because oh, thanks, man. hearing that story gives others, you know, young up and coming actors uh, that want to get into the business. They, you know, you and you, you know, you inspire them to get into it, right? Um, what what advice do you have for those kids that are out there? Uh, that keep getting the door shut in their face. Uh, they, they go to audition after audition. It's a tough business. Um, we know, you know, we've, you know, one of my friends said, you're just praying and hoping that, you know, the big stars like, you know, George Clooney or, or Brad Pitt are not going to pick that role, yeah. that it's open for you. What yeah. advice do you have to all those uh, aspiring actors out there? I will... Um... You know, through, through my years now, I've been very blessed to meet uh, very influential people in the business. And, and uh, I've always picked their brains into how they got into their spot in their career. And uh, I'll never forget, I was, uh, I had the chance to meet uh, Sam Rockwell. And this was, you know, a few years, uh, a few years ago. Sam Rockwell, obviously, is, he's, he's a legend, right? I, I love Sam Rockwell. Um, well, I'll tell you a little story when I met him, and I'll, uh, I'll answer your question. I remember I met him uh, in a bar, actually, and I was uh, meeting a friend, and I actually gave his back to him. And his friend, obviously, Ben Schultz, uh, I was talking to Ben Schultz at the time, a uh, comedian, and he was trying to sort of say, hey, uh, Sam is, hi, yep, yep, yep. And I was just talking and talking and talking. To and I ignored Sam Rockwell for like five minutes straight, uh, which is it's incredible. And he was so, so nice, you know, he actually was like, hey, hi, how you doing? You ignore me for five minutes. But, uh, you know, that night he told me something that I'll never um, forget, Julio. And uh, he said, just don't stop acting. That's, that's really the way to do it. And you ask, how did you get your success? I never stopped acting. Um, and whatever that success really is will come in different times for, for different people. Uh, right? It can take a year, it could take five, it can take 10. Um, the first thing that he said is just fall in love with the craft. And it won't matter, uh, you know, when your break sort of comes from because you're going to love it, you're going to love what you do, and it's going to become a career. And no matter how public you may become, you will love it no matter what, right? So I think if anybody's thinking about acting, it is a very hard um, job 
Um, and some people sort of think of the glamour aspect of it and they forget about the craft, how we actually sit down and we're storytellers and you have to sort of accomplish that and bring a story to life so people can connect to it and hopefully connect to it in some sort of way or form. And if you love it enough, if you actually, you know, put it as a goal, um, rather than a dream, I think that's another thing is, first of all, don't stop acting, just keep acting. If you want to do it, just act as much as you possibly can, any chance you possibly get, right? Um, and the second thing is, don't look at it as a dream. Um, because a lot of people sort of think of, of acting or reaching a point of career as a dream. And sometimes dreams may seem impossible. They may seem like it could disappear at any shape, you know, at any moment. If you set those as goals, and you say, my goal is to get to this point in the career, I want to get to here. Then now you have a timeline. Now you have a process. Now you have training, uh, what to do, what to expect. And now suddenly that becomes more reachable. Um, and it makes your life so easy because now you know what the industry is going to give you. Right. And now like if it gives you something, you have a process for that. Right. And you go, okay, well then I'm going to do this. And it makes your life so, so easy because like you mentioned, it's, it is a very hard industry. You have to be very patient. Uh, to get the roles that you dream of, of having. Um, you know, for me, it took, you know, uh, eight years for me to get a role as a, as a soldier in World War II. I've always wanted to play a soldier in World War II. And I finally got the opportunity with Liberator, but it took me a long time. You know, you have to pay your dues. Um, but if you love it enough and, and if you put your heart into it and you always try to protect, you know, to perfect your craft, it won't matter when, when that may come, just enjoy it. That, that's the beauty of acting, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an art. So if you love doing art, um, you will do it regardless, no matter what sort of hurdles you may come, there's always a way to overcome um, with that. So I think that that's the advice that I would give um, everyone. Very well said, Jose, very Thanks. well said. You're getting lots of kudos in the, in, the, in the comments below, by the way, everyone's just loving oh. your words, man. Hello, um, so Thank you. <laughs> If you guys have a question for Jose, make sure that you put it in the little question mark icon below. We're going to get to your questions uh, momentarily. Uh, so, so please, any questions? Uh, be, no Venom 2 questions. <laughs> Can't answer them. I'm sorry. Sorry, everyone. You cannot answer sorry. those, though, okay? Uh, but, yeah, um, thank, thank you so much for that. That was great. Thank you. Um, let, me, let me ask you this before we get to the questions. I'll, I'll try to make it quick. But... Um, when you know when you were filming the liberator did you think about the previous world war 2 movies like saving private ryan did you think about band of brothers did, were, were you a, were you a fan of those um two two films absolutely and 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 uh, th those films helped us a lot to um understand because of, of our predicament of not being you know out in the field or you know, because it was a blue screen. Uh, I think, you know, most most of us had to go back to those films and remember what we saw, how war was depicted. Not only those two films, but, you know, previous films about World War II, um, you know, before that, to kind of, for us to get an idea. So I think all of us had, to, we had to be fans of the genre regardless, to kind of make sure that, because, and going back to what we talked about, right, is a responsibility to, to share the stories of these great heroes, right? The fun and war. And, and uh, you know, so once you're, you're doing that, you have to watch, you know, great films like Saving Private Ryan. So of course, I, I, I definitely looked up to, to Saving Private Ryan as one of, of my sort of image sort of uh, references to, to what I was gonna do in, in, in Liberator. Um, and also how soldiers act, right? Because it's, it's a whole psychology. If you've never been in war, you have to sit down and kind of go, okay, how would you react to, you know, when you're getting shot at, when, when there is rounds of ammunition going past you, where you can die at any moment? What does that do to you psychologically? Yeah. How would you react to that, right? And then the, then the brotherhood, that sort of those bonds that we spoke about earlier, you know, such as, you know, Cruz and, and, and um, Corporal Hallowell, um, those sort of things come into play in how human being behavior sort of comes and you have to watch and be a fan of, of these great movies. You know, Tom Hanks did a marvelous job. Well, everyone in Saving Private Ryan, right? Yeah. And um, so it was, it, it was an amazing sort of thing to be a part of because, because of it. You had to use imagination and you had to sort of think, 
I'm filming Serpent Pride Ryan too right now. Well, at least in my mind, right? You kind of yeah. sort of think about that and, and uh, hopefully the, you'll deliver what needs to be delivered. You know, I'm going to tell you right now that in my household, Saving yeah. Private Ryan, Band of Brothers is nonstop, and now The Liberator. Those three yes. are playing on. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that, kudos, kudos to everybody. Let's get to our first question. Jose, do you see the question below? I do. Uh, it's from Bradley James Fan Club. Hey, Bradley James Fan Club. Um, it says, what is more important to you, a career um, of a photographer, a model, or an actor? Uh, a model. I don't know if I'm a model per se, um, but <laughs> um, I, I don't. Uh, I would not put them in a category. I wouldn't put one, two, three. I love them all very much equally because they're artistic outlets for me. They're, uh, you know, you kind of just sit down and, and I just want to, you know, express myself, whether it's going to be through acting, if I get a chance to, to be casted on something where I can sort of, you know, tell a story, I'll do it. If I'm not, then I'll take a picture and I'll tell a story through the picture. Um, and if I'm feeling, you know, good, I guess I'm an actor. I mean, a, a model, I don't know. Um, but um, I, I try to sort of explore any way that I can to, to express myself and then to, you know, grow, or get my creative juices, if you will. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't say one is more important than the other. I think they're, they're all in the same sort of realm and same, same stature in my life. I got to pick your brain about photography, but offline, I'll, I'll pick your brain about that. Uh, your next question, what is uh, your next character goal? Next character goal. That is an excellent question. Um, you know, I'm going to put it out in the universe, Julio. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put one of my dream jobs is to be part of the Star Wars genre, right? The, the, yeah. the, all those films. And uh, we finally got some Latina representation in there, which I loved. And those guys opened the doors for us. But I'm such a huge fan um that my dream is to whether it's going to be you know whoever directs it, I, I don't care i just want to be part of of that story right and uh you know maybe it'll be with pedro you know in mandalorian I, I just want to be part of that world so i'm going to put it out there and thank you very much whoever uh, uh oh it's eleanor hey eleanor uh shout out to eleanor she's she's an amazing amazing director writer love you to bits uh but it's an excellent question yeah star wars great right? answer Great answer. I don't know if you can see the back behind me, but I have some Star Wars uh, memorabilia back there. So I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So I love your answer. <laughs> well, Julio, that's because you're a wise man. <laughs> that's uh, let's see. What do we have? Uh, do you see the question? Yes. So what's your next step in your acting career? Do you have personal projects going on? It's a very good question. Um, my next step in my career... Um, well, I guess, you know, waiting for, for to share Venom with, with the, you know, Venom 2 with the world. Uh, personal projects, I guess a lot of photography. I've been doing a lot of photography uh, lately. And um, I started uh, to record a podcast, uh, you know, that pretty much talks about film and, and everything there is about film um, and the hardships of, of being in the industry. Um, but, but I'm just starting with that. So hopefully people will be able to sort of, you know, listen to it very shortly, but that's us pretty much, pretty much. And trying to survive this pandemic, Julio, just like everyone else, trying to stay, <laughs> to, try, to stay sane and, and to be happy and, and yeah. Yeah. Be safe out there, everyone. Please be safe. And if you guys need, you know, if you guys feel, um, you know, mentally drained or, or depressed, please make sure you reach out to, um, you know, to folks out there that could help you. So great, great point. Um, next question comes from Gabby. From uh, Gabby. Yes, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. Uh, which of your characters has been the most difficult one and why? Wow, that is a, that is a hard question, I guess. You know, I'm, I'm trying not to give that cliche answer of like, they're all equally as hard, you know, and I, I, I want to give. So I, I think the first example that sort of comes to mind, I, I had the privilege to tell a story about, uh, well, a, a story in with National Geographic and a show called Locked Up Abroad. 
where I played Carlos Quija. So it's, it's a true story. This is a gentleman that he was imprisoned, wrongfully imprisoned uh, in Mexico um, because he had this sort of same name as someone who has broken the law and they framed him to stay in jail and stuff like those. So it's, it's a story. And I think for me, that was the hardest because um, I guess of the timeline that we had to, to film it. It was, it was a very fast filming process. Um, and I wanted to stay true again, because I felt the responsibility, you know, I was playing a real person. Um, so I wanted to get it right. Um, but because of, of, you know, the circumstances, I, I didn't have the time to sort of, you know, feel comfortable. We can do 17 takes if we want, right? It was, you know, we're filming in Ecuador. So we, we had so much time that we can do it in. So I think Carlos Quijas was, was one of the hardest one because I had to deliver different types of scenes in a very short period of time. Um, and every single day mentally, I was just exhausted. Very happy to be able to tell the story, but it was, it was mentally exhausted to, to go back and forth because, you know, we had to film the, the, you know, good scenes, you know, where Carlos is, is, is you know, being a normal dude then when he's in prison, the hardships of being in prison, well, how he changed and crying and all this and all in a very short period of time. Um, and that was one of the hardest ones. I'll, I'll tell you the cool thing about that one. I remember there was a scene that I had to do with the grandma. Um, she, she plays my grandma and she, as we were shooting, uh, she kept saying, as I was trying to cry in the scene, Julio, because the scene kind of just goes, you know, she's sick and I don't know if I'm gonna see her again. So I'm trying to really bring emotion to, to the scene, Julio, and she's whispering, I wanna go home. And I'm trying what? to, yes, she was just done for today, like mentally. And um, I remember, bless her heart, she was just like, oh, I've been laying here for the longest of time. I want to go home. And every time I'm like, Grandma, I'm going to miss you so much. I want to go home. Ah, stop saying that. It was, it was a very hard scene to do. So I think, yeah, to answer the question, Carlos Guias. Emotionally draining for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got another question, Jose? Yes. Um, uh, are you looking into any projects comedy-wise? Oh, comedy is a very hard genre. Um, I would love to. I would love to give it a shot. Um, I don't know if I'm funny enough, though. Um, I'm funny looking, but funny enough, <laughs> I I'm yet to try that out, Julio. I think. Uh, I think. The reason they're asking is probably because of your your, your poker scene. Um, <laughs> that I thought it was funny, and then uh, when you you know I don't want to give away too much, but when you finally you know confessed, I guess is um, once again I apologize. I, I don't want to give away too much. I well, thought that was pretty funny too. Thank you, man. Well, if, if they haven't seen, they have to go check it out now, and then come back to this interview, yeah. and then we can sort of uh, you know yeah. know what we're talking about. But yeah, it was it was a. That day was a really fun scene. I was trying to channel a friend of mine. Um, you know, he, he has that type of, you know, personality. It was hilarious. And I just kind of thought, you know what? If I'm going to do it, it's going to be here. And uh, Jeb and Greg uh, okayed the, <laughs> the, the performance. We were just having so much fun that day because everyone was there. It was, you know, loads of us in that scene. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, we, we had a blast. I mean, the, the fact that I, I, I made Jeb laugh ever so slightly, that was – that was the win for me. You know, Jeff is always laughing, but that scene, you know, I, I could just hear him in the background. I'm like, yes, I'm doing something good. Uh, so I'm, glad that I'm, I'm sorry. I, I must say your Mexican-American uh, accent was perfect. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, man. Um, I, I did try. You know, you have to represent uh, Los Hermanos Mexicanos. <laughs> uh, your, your next question, comes, another one from Gabby? Yeah. What do you miss the most from Costa Rica? The people, my family, uh, all my hermanos y hermanas, um, you know, from Costa Rica. That's, uh, I'm very proud to say that I'm from Costa Rica because Costa Rica is such, is, is a, to me, is paradise on earth, right? Um, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, if, if, if I could, you know, I'll be there as much as, as I possibly can. But what, what I miss the most, I think it has to be the people. What, you know, the people make that country of, 
the uh, we have a saying, Julio, so I'll teach to you now. It's pura vida. So pura vida for those of you who um, are still studying Spanish um, and don't understand what that means is pure life. Um, but we say it in all different types of, of circumstances. So we will go, hey, pura vida. It could mean, hey, how are you? And it will respond, yeah, pura vida. It means, hey, I'm good. Right, so it has any sort of meaning that you really want to, but it's all about pure life and is that, you know, that happiness. And, and uh, you know, we have this sort of vibe that you kind of just relax. Uh, and then that's why I love Costa Rica is, is that sort of relaxed, you know, sort of vibe. Everyone is sort of chilling and, hey, una cervecita, you know, barbecue, pollito, you know, and, and pintico. Um, and because since I've, I've been in London for so long, you know, London's a very, very fast city. While it's in Costa Rica, you chill. You're like, pura vida, mi hermano, un reggae in the back. You chill on the beach, you enjoy life. And that's, I guess that's what I miss uh, about Costa Rica. Thank you for, that's a great question. Now it got me crying because I'm not in Costa Rica right now. <laughs> yeah, much love to all my Costa Rican brothers and sisters. Much love to all of Central America, South America. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're all Latinos, we're all one. And, you know, we're so happy, Jose, for you as a Latino community for representing, um, you know, and we wish you much success, continued success in your career, man. And, and I truly appreciate you making the time today for my speedcast. And I am so excited to see you in your next, your, your next big project. I can't wait to 2021 to see you in Venom 2. Um, man, uh, can we just get to the summer already? But uh, yeah, much love and success to you, much health to you and your family. And uh, is there anything you want to say to your, to your fans before we conclude? Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Willie, for, for having me on. It was so, so great to talk to you. You're, you're, you're amazing to you know, have us, uh, a lot of our Liberator guys in, in, in this uh, amazing show. So thank you very much for, for that, first of all. Um, and uh, no, I think for everyone who's watching is remember that Pura Vida life, you know what I mean? Uh, to, to stay positive, we're, we're all going through this pandemic uh, together, regardless of, of where we're from. Um, so I think that the, the main thing is, is let's stay positive, you know, have the right mindset and, and we'll, we'll get through it soon and then just live that Pura Vida life, you know, that relax, nice life. We'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Pura Vida, my friend. Pura Pura vida. Vida. Thank you so much, really, for having me on. Never change, you. man. Thank you so much. Thank you, too, man. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Everyone be healthy and safe out there. Um, and have a very rest of uh, enjoyable rest of your Saturday. God bless, everyone. Thank you. God bless you, man. Take care of yourself. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jose. Thank you everyone.